have women who already hold high positions been able to be accountable? Women who, have, who are holding or who have held um, political office are held to a um, very high standard in comparison to, to men. And I think this is, this is a, an unfair position because they came in in exactly the, the same way as, as the men. Why should they be held to, to higher standard? Uh, having said that, I think this is a question that should relate to both male and female um, people who are, who, are, who are in power at the moment. Are they, have, have, they, have they done what they are supposed to be doing? I think we should stop looking at it from a, a gender perspective and look at the issues. Did they do what they set out to do? What sort of um, measures were put in place for, to allow them to be able to, to, to do what they, they set out to do? When you talk about accountability, it's multiple accountabilities. To the extent that some of the women have been... Uh, what is it, re-voted for into office, it means that they've been able to be accountable to their constituencies that have voted for them to be back in, uh, in representing them in public office. But like Kuda has said, we want to hold everybody to the same measurement. And if we're talking about accountability, it also depends on whether the system holds them accountable. So I would say, yes, they've been accountable to the extent that the men that they're also in public office with have been accountable. The UK Parliament, the women that were elected, are 208 of 650. What would you say Zimbabwe stands at? We are around 35%. 35, yeah. So would you say that's a good percentage? It's not. The constitution says 50 percent. The constitution is allowing 50 percent, but there's just no, are you saying there's not enough women or there's just no interest? It's not an event, it's a process. Mm. We're talking about deconstructing opinion socialization over a long period. We're also talking about, I mean, this it's, it's elections, politics, highly competitive, fighting for resources, others wanting to ensure that they remain in a good place and you therefore want to ensure that you are the one who's there. So it becomes very highly competitive and very expensive. One of the issues maybe we didn't say is the way politics in Zimbabwe is being run makes it very expensive for you as an individual to want to participate. Mm -hmm. Because instead of just being a prospective duty bearer or representative of the government or state or state, it becomes very expensive. We've heard of MPs who have to fund funerals, who have to fund weddings. Mm. This is even before we talk about the vote, vote buying that the system also expects you to do. So it becomes very expensive. So it will take a while for us to get to a point where we have the 50%, but the important thing is the Constitution says 50%, mm -hmm. so that's where we aspire to. For those that are in decision-making, they're supposed to be ensuring that we are getting very close to the 50%. Mm. Currently, do we have any female representatives who are wanting to join politics? Well, we have um, three women who are leading political parties mm. um, at the moment. The most popular being uh, Joyce Mujuru. But there's also Barbara Nyagomo, who is heading Progressive Democrats of Zimbabwe. And there's also Marceline um, Chikasha. And so the three women that you've just mentioned, do they stand a chance in 2018 election? I don't want to be a prophet and say, you know, they, this, is, this is what's going to happen. But they stand a, a, as good a chance as any yeah. other male um, um, presidential, presidential candidate. Heather? Um, I would say uh, there's still a, a huge gap. Uh, looking at uh, what the law provides for in terms of gender parity, uh, section um, 3G, I think, of the Constitution, which talks about gender equality. And there are also other provisions, like about the Senate, there are other provisions about na National Assembly. But we are saying uh, currently, the level of um, women participation in high office is still very low. So looking at three female presidents in a country where we have about 46 political parties, mm. 
I'm just saying there's still a huge gap in terms of uh, female participation. For these and other stories, visit our website www.263chat.com. Follow us on Twitter at 263chat and like our Facebook page 263chat.